hi guys this is the golden girl md and you're welcome to yet another video today is medic mondays and we are continuing our uk dog test relocation series and today i'll be talking about all things IELTS or the IELTS or the ILET, depending on where you're from and it's going to be really informative so if you're interested in seeing more please stick and say while you're at it don't forget to like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe I'd like to say a special thank you to the 228 subscribers that I have so far. God bless you. Thank you for supporting my channel. And I also want to say, please like my videos. Um, try to like all my videos. That is the best way to push this content out. So if you watch this video, please try and like it and I will be very grateful. The IELTS exam or the IELTS exam is a very important exam because it's one of the ways that you can use to prove your English proficiency, especially if you want to work, study or immigrate to any of these countries, that is um, UK, Canada, New Zealand and Australia. Most of these countries will require you to prove your English proficiency. And one of the ways you can do this is by taking the IELTS exam. This is taking in over 140 countries around the world. So it is most likely that you will find an IELTS test center in your country. This exam is organized by the British Council and there are different types, okay? In all, there are five different types of IELTS exams, okay? So we have the IELTS and the IELTS Immigration or IELTS UKVI. So IELTS and IELTS UKVI. So the IELTS test is divided into two. You have IELTS General and you have IELTS academic and then the IELTS UKVI is also divided into two so we have IELTS UKVI academic and we have IELTS UKVI general test okay so that's four the fifth one is the IELTS life skills okay um, but for the purpose of relocating as a medical doctor what you need to do is to make sure that you are taking the academic version of the IELTS, whether UKV IELTS or the normal IELTS. It has to be academic. It's really important that it's academic because that is what the General Medical Council will recognize. Okay, so these five different types of IELTS are slightly different in that they are testing um, generally the same thing, your English proficiency, but then they are doing so in slightly different ways, okay, based on what you are using the IELTS exam for. As a medical doctor, you need to take the academic version of the IELTS, so you have to make sure that you are doing this. So how you can take IELTS is in two ways. You can take IELTS on a computer, which is known as a computer-based test, or you can take IELTS on paper, which is the paper-based test. So I took the computer-based test, meaning that for setting parts of, or let me say for the whole exam, you are doing it in front of a computer. You are using your computer mouse and the keyboard to take the exam. Paper-based test, you have your paper and you have your pen or your pencil and use that to take the test. If you want to do it on the computer, you have to make sure that you are quite good with computers, especially when it comes to typing. Um, by the grace of God, I am a decent typist and so writing my essays on the computer was very comfortable, was very okay for me. So if you know that you are not um, really good with computers, um, just try and go for the paper-based one. Okay. The other thing is that the computer-based tests um, have many more slots than the paper-based ones. I guess they are trying to encourage people to take it on the computer. The advantage of taking it on the computer is that, you know, you don't have to contend with things like cancellations and um, handwriting. And when I make a mistake, I can just delete. Like it was to me it was a no-brainer but that's because 
I am okay with computers. Um, but for the paper one, you have to use your pen or your pencil. And, um, you know, if your paper is not neat, it can be a bit of a problem. But then do the one that you think you can do better at. What does the exam involve? So the IELTS exam has four different sections. There's the reading, the writing, the speaking and listening. So it tests you on four different aspects of English. So for the reading, you'll be giving passages to read and then you will answer the questions that follow. For the writing, you will be giving two different sorts of essays, like not long essays, but like short essays. And then you have to write about the topic you are you are being given. Sometimes you may be given like a picture or a diagram and you will be asked to describe it in writing. You understand? Um, for the listening, you'll be listening to, it's kind of like the way we did oral English back in SS. So you'll be listening to a passage or an interaction between two people. And then afterwards, you'll be asked questions which you need to answer. Okay. For the speaking, so with the speaking, you are going to be um, in front of an examiner. Okay, you have an examiner who asks you different questions. It can be anything. It can be about yourself. It can be about your family. It can be about your work, anything. And then you are just going to flow. You're just going to talk. You're just going to speak to the person. Okay, so the IELTS exam, in my opinion, is not difficult but most people struggle with writing because you know writing can be quite um relative to who is marking your paper but there are materials which i'll talk about a little later there are materials that you can use to help you to have a general idea of what the examiners expect so that you can at least make the required minimum score in order to use your IELTS for your GMC registration. Okay, so money. How much does it cost to take the IELTS? So, of course, over the years, the price has gone up. In my time, I paid about 1,500 Ghana cities to take the IELTS. But today, on the British Council website, it cost 2600 around 2600 to take the normal IELTS and about 2800 to take the UKVI IELTS. In the UK it costs 895 pounds to take the IELTS exam. So it differs depending on where you are taking it. Um it may be different in your country and in your currency. So I talked about preparation for the IELTS and the materials. So the most popular material that is out there is the Cambridge IELTS uh, material. So these are like PDFs that give you some of the sample questions, passages, dialogues when it comes to the listening. It also has audios um, attached to them so that you can use that to prepare for your listening test. And then also dialogues when it comes to the speaking test, like a sample dialogue that you can have with an examiner, how you can answer certain questions. In my opinion, that was really, really helpful. The thing about IELTS is that as a medical doctor, you have to get a minimum of 7.5 and i mean the highest score you can ever get is 10 but no one really ever gets 10. i think the highest people get is 9 9.5 that is like you perform exceptionally exceptionally well but um as a doctor you need to get at least a band 7.5 band 7.5 is just the average of these four sections that i've mentioned but you must not get less than seven in any of these categories so that is the catch. So you can get 8, 9, 8.5. And then if you get 6.5 in any one of the others, you have to sit the whole exam again. That is what the GMC requires. And so my best advice will be to prepare very well. Do a lot of sample questions before you take this exam so that you have a good chance of passing it on your first try. Because Charlie, 
there's no money anywhere nobody wants to be writing this exam more than once by the grace of god i passed the ielts on my first try i had a band eight yes it was either eight or eight point five i can't remember it's been like three years now but i passed on my first try and i think it's really possible to pass on your first try so you're done with the IELTS exams. Your results are usually going to be with you in five to seven days if you took the computer one and then in about 13 days if you took the paper-based one. When your results come and you have achieved the required score, you are then going to upload this result on your GMC account. Remember the GMC account I told you to create in my last Medic Monday video? Yes. So that account, you're going to upload this um, result onto your GMC website. In a few days, GMC is going to get back to you, letting you know that they have accepted your IELTS um, score and then they will invite you to book your plug one test so that's it guys that's all about the IELTS exam I don't want anyone here to be afraid of the IELTS because I believe that you can pass it in one try all right I hope that was really informative and um, there is another exam you can take which is the OET and then there is another way you can actually prove your English proficiency without taking an exam at all. I will talk about these in my future videos so please stick and stay. Don't forget to like this video. It is really important that you press that like button because it helps youtube to push this video to many more people to see don't forget to comment and to share and of course don't forget to subscribe thank you so much for watching this video and i will catch you in my next video bye <laughs>